these workshops in, in a wide variety of musical topics. Um, and we've st you know started this right when the quarantine started. So you know it's been about three months of, of workshops, and uh, you know we've been really happy with um, all the great knowledge has been shared by so many great musicians and artists, many of them based in New York, but really from all over. Um, and all of July, we have been focusing on rhythm um, in very aspects. We had Jamie Haddad, an incredible percussionist. Last week, we had the great knowledge a, uh, a, a workshop series by Bala Skandan, a great Carnatic Murthungus, where we're kind of going through Carnatic rhythm, doing a 101, um, which we're going to be doing his final class on Thursday of this week. And, um, you know, rhythm is very much an essential part of dance as well in India. And um, we wanted to kind of explore this deeper and we thought it would be amazing to have a wonderful Kathak dancer, Parul Shah, who is with us today. Hi, Parul. And uh, Naren Budkar, who is an amazing tabla player. Both are, you know, kind of based in Brooklyn and um, I've known for a long time. So it's really, really wonderful to be with you both today. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're really looking forward to uh, diving deep into uh, the world of Kathak and how rhythm plays a part in it. And um, yeah, so, uh, you know, with, without further ado, I think we'll just jump right into it and I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Parul and Narain. And um, one thing I want to mention is if you have any questions, please feel free to write it below, right below the window that you're watching, there are comments. So you go ahead and type in any questions you have, and we will answer those questions uh, right there in the chat. So keep an eye on all that as you're doing it. There's also a donate button there, and uh, please do consider donating. Um, it goes towards Brooklyn Raga Massive, and we're putting on these workshops for free, so uh, we could use the support as well. So we really greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so now, without further ado, here's Parul and Narain. Hi, Namaste, Arun. Uh, thank you so much um, for inviting us uh, to be able to share our, our art and to, I guess, um, share a little bit about you know, the, the dance form and how it connects to, to rhythm. Um, before we go into the actual uh, the rhythmic aspects, I thought I should just talk a little bit about Gathak. Um, I, I'm sure there are many of you watching that are more familiar than others. So I thought giving you guys a little bit of a context um, is important. Uh, Gathak is one of the seven main classical dance forms in India. Um, and Gathak is from the northern parts of India, uh, coming from the Sanskrit root word Gatha, which means to tell a story. So essentially, all of the Indian classical dance forms evolved with the intention of telling stories specifically stories based on Hindu mythology. So when Kathak evolved about 1550 BC, it evolved with a group of male nomads who traveled to the indigenous populations of India in the efforts of spreading Hinduism. And how they did this is they used uh, simple hand gestures, uh, some footwork, um, a bit of miming, a little bit of singing. So the form at that time wasn't as codified as what we see, uh, what Kathak looks like today. Um, one would say it was a little bit more folkloric. Uh, Kathak has been influenced by the history of India, essentially. And what, what makes Kathak different than the other classical dance forms is that we call it a hybrid form, meaning that there's more than just one aesthetic at play. Kathak is not just a Hindu art form, it's just as much a Islamic art form. Um, so during the history, although it did evolve with the retelling of stories such as the hybrid epics of the Mahabharata and Ramayana, particularly lots of stories based on Krishna, during the Mughal rule, when, uh, the, when the Persians came and ruled India around the 1700s, they, the Persian rulers, the emperors, had a great love for the arts. So when they came over, they brought their own musicians, their dancers, their poets to be entertained in the courts. And so over a period of time, hundreds of years, slowly 
the Hindu artists came into the forms. And at that time, also women started doing the form Kathak. So there was this co-mingling, a beautiful co-mingling, a sharing of poetry, of, of music, of movement. And so during that time, it also, the, the focus was not on the religious aspects because there were two religions at play, but it was more about the virtuosity of the technique, um, our footwork, our hand gestures. And many believe that this was like a Renaissance period for uh, the North Indian music and dance. A lot of music, new music was created. Uh, what I personally um, treasure about Kathak is that it, it, it celebrates not just Hinduism, but it also celebrates Islam. So we do things in, in the dance form that is a salam, very typical when you're doing a tarana. Uh, and we do also many dances, little compositions that we do a namaskar. Um, so that's something that's very interesting about the way that Kathak evolved. Uh, I want to mention, because I think it's really important, uh, why dance evolved in India. Like, why, why is dance there? Dance is very connected to the philosophy of Hinduism. And that being its belief that uh, the arts is one of the best means achieving a higher level of being, what we call moksha. Um, so how is this achieved is that we try to uh, find that connection between the mind, body, and soul. And so this is also seen, I think, in all dance forms. That is what we're trying to do. We're trying to connect with our body and our spirit and our mind. Um, also in Indian dance, we connect to nature, the, el the, na the natural elements of the world. And one, of course, is earth. And this is where rhythm comes in. So how we connect to the earth is that one, we dance barefoot. And why we dance barefoot is because we want this direct connection to the earth. We want to feel the floor that we're dancing on. Of the world. So and I want to do a lot of teaching. One thing I tell my students is because we do so much footwork, it's, it's not about putting your foot on, on, on the ground and just creating these rhythms, but you really want to find that connection when you put your foot onto the earth. And of course, that doesn't happen in, you know, in one year, it takes a very long time. This is what I was told by my teacher. I think I finally understood that after doing the basic footwork for at least, I don't know, seven, eight years. It takes a very long time, but it is, it is a very beautiful feeling to actually feel that connection to the floor, to the earth that you're walking on. Um, and that's the beginning of our relationship to, to the earth, to the floor, and this is where rhythm comes in. And as Arun said, uh, Indian classical dance um, is not separate from rhythm. Everything we do is embedded in rhythm. And particularly, I think in Kathak, we speak all of our compositions. Um, and so that's a part of our training, that we're able to recite some of all the compositions, and we do it within given time cycles, which I think Naren will also talk a little bit more about. Um, so that's a little bit about, you know, where this form kind of comes from, how it evolved. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to say is in Kathak, and I, I want you to kind of keep an eye out on that, um, is that from, as I said, that we're connecting to the natural elements of the world, from my hip to my feet, I'm very grounded, right? But then from the hip to my head, I'm always reaching upward. So the movements, it's like you're kind of halving your body, right? With the, with the feet and your hips, you're very grounded, but then you'll see with my movements, we're reaching upwards. So it's kind of this, um, I don't know, it's a, it's, it, you're doing two very complicated things at the same time. And that's not just in Kathak, that's in all uh, Indian classical dance. Right, you're like the percussionist and you're the, the tabla player yeah. and the sarangi, both. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, that's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Naren, do you want to say something before I do a little bit of a demonstration? Um, sure. Or do you just want to do the thoughts and then I can talk about the tabla? Ah, uh, sure. Yeah. So I thought you know there's there's um, a lot of components to kathak, uh, and of course we can't touch upon all of them today. But I thought some of the main uh, components in a traditional performance we can go over. And so generally when we begin a traditional performance, we start with these very slow stylized movements. 
um, and that essentially we're playing with the rhythm uh, and the time cycle. And the beauty to this whole composition is that we're always, um, it's kind of the surprise element when we come to the number one beat. Right, so we do a lot of we don't. It's called a tot, and a tot actually means the way that you're sta standing, your stance. So you will see a lot of stylized movements, but then you find this while doing these slow movements as there's this surprise element when the when the sum comes. So try to try to catch that. Uh, so yeah, so we can we can start with that, and I guess then Noreen, you can talk a little bit about the double ups. Yeah, I had a quick question for sure. for the thought. Is that like a at a certain point in a performance, um, is yes. it in every performance? Yeah. So in if you are watching a traditional Kathak performance, you will most likely see a tot or many tots done uh, in the very, very beginning of a performance. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So this is kind of like the, the beginning. Okay. It's the very right. beginning. And it, it starts in the Vilambic, which is a slow light, slow speed. It's, right. it's just, so we're in this time cycle and you might even be able to catch it with the tabla. It'll just be like one, two, three, four. So it's very, very slow, mm -hmm. uh, and you can you can try to follow along. It it's this the time cycle is sixteen beats right. called theme sal. Um, so you can try to even catch that sum. Mm -hmm. When you hear it, when I say sum, I mean the number one beat. So the common thing to like you'll see is a movement like a sharp a sharp head, a sharp glance, um, a sharp. Uh, wrist movement hmm. right on the sum right on the down right on the sum yeah and if it's well, not on the sum i did it wrong <laughs> well you know and with zoom sometimes things aren't on sum <laughs> but um are thoughts always in tintal or can you have it in ektal or yeah we have we have it in every thal. right okay so it can be in any any thal and there's is there a lyrical content to this absolutely so generally when we're doing a, a thought you would perform it traditionally with a sitar, I mean, a sarangi. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, that would be the ideal way. Uh, and the sarangi is very, very close to kata, right? And yeah. I think, um, I don't want to go on a tangent, but you know, I work with, I work with Erin a lot um, <laughs> and, and his wife, his beautiful wife, Trina, uh, but it's because the sarangi is not as available here and the closest kind of um, soulful quality is, you know, the violin. Uh, yeah. So it is for 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 like pots and other things I do. You definitely want that that string instrument. Right. There's a lot of emotion being expressed. Yeah. 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 In a very subtle way. <laughs> okay. Great. Let's um let's check it out. So if you want to go back, then I can uh, I'll start okay. playing the track when you're ready.
Oops, let's start it again. All right. <laughs> wow, that is beautiful. And that was in, so that was in a, a Tintal, a 16 beat cycle. And there was a tempo change in there, right? It kind of picked up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, will that go even further? Like, I mean, I know we cut the recording. It sounded like it cut short at some point, but um, does it, it stays in that and it keeps progressing tempo wise? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So Naren, what tempo was that? Was that Madhyalai? Uh, it was still on the faster side, but still Willem I would say. Okay. It was it was on the faster there. side. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, so this, this triple it can be played in the Madhyalai. It will definitely work out, but we stuck to the Willem bit in order to make the transition somewhat gradual. Mm -hmm. So it, I mean, it started in, in Vilambit and then it's going to move um, within the same composition. It'll keep on increasing in tempo. How does it go up to like a drut? And, and these terms, I, I, you know, people may not be always familiar with them, but Vilambit is kind of the slowest tempo. Madhyalai is sort of the medium level tempo and drut would be the fast tempo, right? Um, so it, so it, a and and I'm sorry I'm forgetting the name of this particular this is a thought so the thought may make it all the way to drut is is that correct yeah so a thought will never be in drut line a thought will always be in vilambit line only in vilambit okay yeah 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 and then we added the tripoli just to take it somewhere <laughs> and what's that tripoli so the Tripoli is in, it's the same. Why don't you explain? I think you can explain it better than that. Uh, three, three, just three. So this is a composition and there are many compositions uh, in Kathak and Tabla like that. Uh, it's more or less the same composition, but you play it at three different speeds. Okay. And towards the end of the final repetition for final, final speed, whichever you have chosen, it comes back to the sum, it comes back to the downbeat. Mm -hmm. So there are chopalis and panchapalis as well. So you go through, you know, not just three gears, but maybe four or five gears of speed change. But you're basically playing the same composition in five different speeds, so four different speeds, and then it adds up eventually to the sum. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're, when you're talking about increasing the speed, are we talking also about subdivisions? Like it'll be in... It, four and then it'll be in three like that uh, so is that far, considered an increase in speed so no the composition so here's the thing the the measuring you know, the, the currency or the gold standard in this case which is the nagma the melody that is playing that's for example keeping the steady beat so that part obviously will never change the composition itself will go through three or four different speeds uh, so what I'm saying is the subdivisions, you know, if the subdivisions are the ones that are marked by the original tal, then in that sense, the subdivisions don't change. You just do, you just accomplish playing more things within the same subdivision. Okay. Right. So I think the next thing we wanted to uh, touch upon um, are the, like, we have lots of P highs. Uh, and then there are many, many different variations of Thihai's. So I think Naren, uh, I think he can explain it better, this composition that we show with numbers. Okay. Um, so when tabla accompanies Kathak dance, there are many different kinds of compositions. Uh, some are lyrical, I mean, we'll get to that. The thought was definitely a lyrical composition. And there are others that demonstrate mostly pure technique and the mathematical intricacies involved. And therefore we call them the, you know, ginti ki tihais, ginti just the counting. So, you know, the, the point of these kind of tihais is basically to show how a set of counts adds up to the required number. Basically tihai is a, the best translation for Tihai is a three part rhythm cadence. That's the best way I can translate it. And this is somewhat important because, you know, in the Western, in the European classical music, or even in jazz, we have the harmonic cadences quite prolifically, but the rhythmic cadences, uh, 
in such a disciplined and meticulous manner i think one can call that one of the characteristics of the indian percussion so when you play something a set of things for three identical times such that at the end of the third repetition you come back to the beginning of the cycle just that statement people can imagine entails a lot of mathematics so if the tintal is 16 beats long and if you want to come back to the down beat then you have to add that extra beat so that makes it 17 beats long and then how can you divide it in three equal parts and give spaces so it will all add up to the right number and this is just the beginning it can get much more complicated than that uh, but so these tihais which are the rhythmic cadences there are many kinds of them the one that parul wanted me to talk about was the ginti ki tihai the counts so you show people that a set of counts you recite or you do three times and at the end of the third counting or recitation or playing you are back to the beat number 1 um so we can uh speak the i don't know aron we can speak we have a ti hai which is it's really nice very short um and what it sounds is like e do din 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 cha e do din cha e do din cha e do din cha e do e do e do e do e do din cha pa cha sa e e do din cha pa cha sa e e do din cha pa cha sa e e do din 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 cha e do din cha e do din cha e do din cha e do e do e do e do e do din cha pa cha sa e e do din cha pa cha sa e e do din cha pa cha sa e e do din 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 cha e do din cha e do din cha e do din cha e do e do e do e do e do din cha pa cha sa e e do din cha pa cha sa e e do din cha pa cha sa e so so this is how we um i don't know if everybody speaks hindi or knows the the numbers so essentially what we're saying is 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1
do are you thinking about okay what is a great rhythmic pattern that i can do now let me try to put footwork to it or are you dancing and thinking okay i think this looks and feels good now let me see if it works on a tabla like what happens first or yeah. does it depend on who you are is it different for everybody yeah. I, th I think that's a really good question. And I really do think it depends on who you are and what you're trying to attain. Um, so, you know, for me, because uh, I do a lot of contemporary work, I, I will try sometimes within the frame of uh, Kathak compositions and Kathak rhythms, I will, I'll, I'll try to create maybe like a bit thumb, you know, where it's something that I already have, but I need more, something i need to create some kind of space where i can slow it down or you know make it faster or or create because also rhythms and i should have mentioned that before is that you know the aspect also of rhythm is that we want to connect to the earth but it also is um so embedded in our dance forms is because it we use it to repl replicate sounds right sounds of nature and sounds of birds and emotions right. right so we use it also to if i if i want to show a section of something that's very powerful right i will want certain kinds of rhythms for that so for myself i do use the rhythms to attain um a certain type of emotion and i think most dancers do that mm -hmm. Right. I mean, yeah, because you're expressing so much and it's kind of a full body experience, say, you know, um, for it to feel good also and is, is essential. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I know you had some other things you wanted to get to if we want to. Um... Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, and it's I guess it's worked out well, as I was saying that we're we replicate um, sounds of nature and sounds of birds. Uh, and so we have lots of fun kind of rhythms and compositions and all. And I wanted to speak one for you. Um, I don't know, or I'm going to put you on the spot since uh, you're here <laughs> and I can see you. Uh, <laughs> what does what does this sound like to you? Nagita ri kuku taka taka chana ka chana ka taka ta jijiki ta dilang ga dhum ki ta taka ta jijiki ta taka ta dilang ga dhilang ga dhum ki ta taka ta jijiki ki ta ta <laughs> what does that sound like to me? Yes. If anything. Well, I was imagining um, animals playing in the trees, to be honest. Perfect. Like, like monkey Perfect. swinging. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. So, you know, these are called uh, Burmaloo uh, compositions. And I I think this, I know Maraji does a lot of like peacock here and, you know, but I see monkeys too, right? <laughs> I totally see. Um, so, but you know, it is the idea of playful animals, right? Um, yeah, and I think Naren can add on to what I'm saying about these, uh, like sound, like Burmalu kind of compositions. Uh, well, to speak more generally, when Tabla is playing with the Kathak, and this like, ties up a little bit with what you asked previously, Arun, uh, what comes first? Uh, generally, because tabla is doing the role of an accompanying instrument, generally I will try to follow the dance. But in terms of what comes first, although the dance comes first when I'm accompanying her, which is what I'm doing, it really depends on the compelling theme. Mm. You know, in the in the old film industry, they would compose the melody first, and the poets would write words to that. But if there was like a absolute profound poetry, like somebody like Neeraj then the musicians would bend backwards to find the appropriate melody to do the justice. Mm. So whenever there are compelling themes in any repertoire, and when people are open to it, they will find aesthetic value in it and try to do something with it. Uh, working with Parul, the amount of times we had to go out of our traditional repertoire just to try to come up with the sounds that 
matched whatever her creative ideas were was a beautiful exercise and i'm sure the process can work the other way also so that is just addressing to your previous question but so speaking of sounds and their replications although the language of tabla by the way both tabla and kathak are performed as well as recited one should be able to recite the repertoire uh, and although there are commonalities in the language there are some differences also and what it comes down to for a tabla player is to get the gist of what the kathak repertoire is saying and then replicate that without worrying about exactly where in the dictionary that particular sound is on what page it is without worrying about that try to get the gist of the composition dhila or kada there is like a buoyancy in it mm. and tak it tak it din tak it tak it din there is more staccato element in it mm. or din 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 sorry go ahead sorry those syllables that you said you know the buoyancy right that yes. they those syllables don't necessarily exist in the tabla language it's more of the kathak language well first of all or at this point even if they exist they have been introduced because of the need to accompany kathak that much i can definitely say for mm-hmm. example i think we were talking the other day this whole dinagina thing doing things with a ring finger hmm the lucknow people absolutely epitomized that and that came at least in part due to the need to play with these wonderful dancers in the courts of the kings so it has introduced or it has enriched the language of tabla as it should hmm. that's beautiful i mean it's amazing how um the art forms can kind of grow together right they're influenced yes. by each other they inform each other but they push yes. the boundaries um yes. of each other like you just mentioned how you both have worked together for a long time and you're always you know paro might do something and you're like okay now how do i do that right that just me i have that has it. happened yeah and vice versa and then you're like okay but then that opens you up it opens up the instrument absolutely um, things that maybe it hadn't done before so yes the history of both the art forms are kind of always like pushing against each other and making each other yes grow yes. up uh, you know if I, if i say one more thing as an accompanist again i have heard it you know so i have played with the instrumentalists with the vocalists and with the dancers yeah. and when i consulted with the maestros of each of those faculties and asked them what would make me a better accompanist independently they have given me the same answer that if you are playing with vocal music you should be kind of singing inside you so you you should put yourself in the other person's shoes and then you won't do your job mechanically you will emotionally actually connect to that and same thing with the instrumentalists and dancers you have to put them in you their shoes and know what, what are the leading or anticipatory processes involved and the chances are that you will actually go with them and the chances are that the audience will perceive it as an excellent together performance generally that does happen yeah yeah, yeah. i also i think that um is a very very important component to all uh in in classical dance right to find yes. uh that that same language to be on the same page because i i feel like when you're not um it comes across very clearly so i think to to find that place where you know there's a coming together of the dancer and the music musicians is it's vital it's it's vital in 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 classical dance mm-hmm. uh i think this is also a good time i was you know i what you're talking about is creating new material i was actually trying to create this new tukra and i thought i had it uh and so then i ran it by narender and he's like no no something's something's a miss here and i thought it is on you know and i again i was looking for something in this tukra and uh we're going to we're going to demonstrate for you um because i wanted in this and i don't know if you would be able to tell uh there there is a contemporary element in in it um i don't know if the actual the composition i don't i think noren can answer answer that better if he feels the composition has a contemporary feel to it but the 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 way that i'm performing it my uh choreography definitely has a contemporary element to it 
Do you feel that, Naren, in this, in this with the thumb? Do you feel there's something uh, that's... I, I think I do in the following way. The template, of course, we know the dhit tam and dhit tam, those templates exist. But the way it is put together, and here's the thing, I have never seen you dance it. I'm going to see it now. So it's hard to judge a composition that was created for dance without yeah. actually having seen it performed. And yet, just the way it has been presented, there is some contemporary element to it, I think. Yeah, okay. Yes. So I think, let's, shall we show that? Yes, oh, definitely. Uh, two avartans, Parul, one or two? Uh, I think two. Okay. Can you see me or am I a little dark? Yes, no, it's okay. I can see you. So in this case, the the dance came first, and then yeah. and then you played you 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 know played the exact same thing, um, and and then now this is the, is this the first time you're doing it together? Yes. You just said you hadn't really seen it performed, yeah. Yeah. So I created this composition. Yeah. Um, I had a composition very similar to this, and I wanted to tweak it. Yeah. I wanted. To give it a little bit of, I wanted to innovate it hmm. for my purpose, what I'm using it for. Uh, it needed just to be a little bit more contemporary in its movement. So then I shifted it a bit and then I ran it by Naren. And so again, he was like, well, we did it on Thal and I thought it was on and he was like, no, there's something that's slightly off. So we had to, you know, he helped me fix that. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's beautiful. And it's great to hear how, you know, you said that you had something similar to this, but mm -hmm. you, you modified it, um, yeah. which I think happens for a lot of musicians, um, or especially when it comes to things like Dihai's corvées in South Indian music, um, that, you know, one, and then it can become so much more, right? We can kind of adapt them for our needs and the context is so important right like something like this is like well what's it coming out of what's happening before it and what's right. happening after it and that sort of tells the story of what it should be like um maybe it needs to have more energy maybe less energy because it's coming from a place that's quieter or calmer um so i feel like all those things kind of impact composing and creating these sort of um works yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, um, so I think what we wanted to talk about next is another aspect in Kathak that, again, is very rhythmic and it's also very lyrical. And we call it Gat, and then we have Gat Nikas and Gat Bha. So either with, uh, with Guts, we're either telling a story um, and it can be, there are lots of, Gatbhav that is based on Krishna's stories as a child. Um, there are many stories of um, playfulness in, in Gat. And then we also have pure dance, Gat Nikas, which um, is a little bit straighter, but uh, the, the, the rhythm of a Gat is, is very clear. So I don't know, maybe before we do our demonstration, maybe uh, Naren, you can play a little bit of what a gut will always sound, like a gut job. Okay.
that's how YouTube basically works. Yeah, so do you, do you hear, um, I don't know how you describe it, there's this kind of beautiful uh, flow in a guck, and guck comes from this idea of gait, right? Yes. We're showing yeah. different kinds of walks, right? Yeah. We have several kinds of different kinds of actual, you know, jal or walk. And so in a guck is essentially what we're showing that, and either it's sometimes with the story or not. And so I'm going to do a small demonstration um, of a gut, and it's a gut with uh, holding a pot on my head. So you're going to see lots of different kinds of walks with an imaginary pot on my head. And the idea is also seeing a kind of weightage of, of the pot. Yeah? Hmm. So we're going to play, uh, I guess, the recording. Okay. Yeah. Again, hundreds and different 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 types of guts. Um, I personally love doing guts. They're very expressive, uh, and they're expressive whether you're telling an absolute story or you're just kind of feeling a movement. A lot of fun to do. Um, you know. In that section, there were some things that were very, you know, um, orchestrated, maybe connected, where the tabla is playing something and your feet are doing it or you're moving directly with the specific uh, composition tabla is mm -hmm. playing. Um, but sometimes it feels like it's also just the tabla is grooving, for lack of a better word. Um, is there improvisation? Is there any element of connection where it's just spontaneously things are happening between the dancer and the percussionist? Aaron, do you want to take that? Sure. So from, from my perspective, especially, well, generally during the entire performance, but especially during the guts, because the dancer is doing such a wavy and non-staccato sort of like gliding through the wind kind of moments, mm -hmm. you know, you keep that going almost as a melody on tabla as much as you can. And then look for like these small punctuation marks where if there is like a particularly sharp moment, then try to punctuate that. Mm. Uh, and if, if I do that, generally I would feel that we're pretty connected. So while keeping the flow intact, once in a while there are those pulsations which you latched onto and sort of punctuated that. That's how it would be for me. Uh, I have heard it described that when Pandit Samta Prasad used to play with Birju Maharaji back then, it was as if his pointer finger what's connected by invisible thread to Maharaj's great toe. So if that lifted, his finger lifted. I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I know in Bharatanatyam, which is South Indian classical dance, the Mardangist is watching the feet, right, directly. And then there is this idea, like exactly what you're describing of 
seeing certain um, movements or accents and then catching those accents. But there's also this element of predicting what the dancer may do and what yes. the dancer is feeling and doing it in unison or um, feeding off of each other. So that energy transfer is totally, yes. um, is totally there. I also want to say that, you know, in, um, in Kathak in particular, because of its history, uh, and also all the other dance forms have the, the pure dance aspect and the Abhinaya, but I feel in Kathak there's such a deep separation. Um, so we have a lot of vocabulary that has no specific meaning, right? Which I like because it allows us to do the same piece, but have it very, very different every single time. When you say right? vocabulary, you mean movement vocabulary? The movement. And it's not, you know, we, we emote so much in comparison to other dance forms in the world. We emote from our face a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when I'm doing a pure dance piece, right, it's never, ever devoid of mood or feeling. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Indian classical dance is it's connection, right? We're also not just connecting with ourselves, but to connect with the audience is vital. It's very, our audience is very, very important. And there's this whole rasa theory, uh, which will have to be another talk. Um, but, you know, it, it is all about this connection that you're making with your audience and how you're transcending your space and going on this journey. It's beautiful. Uh, but my, my point, going back to my point, is that when you're doing a pure dance piece, right, in Kathak, the way, the feeling that you, that I might be conveying might be different every single time I do it, right? It doesn't always have to be. And then again, I think this is this, um, this aspect of improvisation that you find in Kathak, which I really like. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Um... Yeah. So the other, I hear a little child. <laughs> um, so how are we doing with time? Because we have just like two more things that we'd like to share yeah, with you. We have about, we have about, um, let's say about 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Yes. So the other aspect that I personally have been growing to love um, are kabits, which are small stories. Um, and it's generally based on Hindu mythology. Uh, and kabits are not done we have three main gharanas in Kathak, uh, and kavits, I think, are done more in the Jaipur gharana. I'm more trained in the Lucknow gharana. So we don't do kavits a lot, but they're like little, little stories, and they're they're spoken very quickly, like this one, yamu naki tata bara nacha taka neya tata heya vaja tapaya la chum chum chana na 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 tram te tram te tram te tata te tata Hey, so there's these little, little stories. This was about Krishna going to the river and playing on the banks of the river with his feet, right? So uh, they're just these like little narratives and within those narratives are these rhythmic compositions. Um, some are more complicated, complex than others. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's a part of Kathak that I myself have not done a lot, but I've learned this from a very dear friend of mine. Um, and this is a kavit that we're gonna share with you about Shiv. And it's essentially showing him in his glory uh, with skulls around his neck. And <clears throat> you know, this is a Shiv pose. Uh, it's also showing his wife, Bharati. And within that, there's this rhythmic component, which is also, you know, what I was saying to bring out that kind of power of Shiva we have these rhythms that are also showing his 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 power. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. maybe if, if do you want to add anything to that, Naren? Did I miss something or? No, you didn't miss anything. Uh, the literal translation of Kavit is poetry. So what's you know what's interesting about this is um, you have to choose or the poet has to choose the words that are percussive in nature. So this, you know, recitation of words that actually have literal meaning, because otherwise the tabla and the kathak repertoire has an emotional content, but the syllables don't have a literal meaning, right. except when you're doing the kavits, they actually have a literal meaning because they're poetries, but the words are so chosen that they are percussive with some, with some attack on them. 
and therefore they can be danced to uh-huh. so especially when- in the banaras gharana of tabla uh, they have a lot of uh, poetry is like that for tabla at least so yes. what parol recited were so chosen, that had a that had that a literal translation those were they have a literal translation in addition to some percussive syllables that were also added right so it was a mixture of those together it's a mixture of those but it has a literal translation yes oh, there yet it's beautiful yeah. yeah okay great let's uh, so i'm playing this right yes okay महेश जय महेश जय महेश जटा डूट कंठ सोहे काल कूट त्रिनेत्र चंद्र भाल त्रिनेत्र चंद्र भाल गले में मुंडा की माल गौरी हर धांग संग गौरी हर धांग संग भस्म लक्ष अंग अंग जाकी महिमा अपार जाकी महिमा अपार वेद रचित जाके धेता धेता त्रक धेता त्रक धेता 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 धातक धित टकत गदिगन धान धान धा धातक धित टकत गदिगन धान धान धा धातक धित टकत गदिगन धान धान धा I love doing that. <laughs> I feel so like <laughs> empowered. <laughs> Narin, that was you? Uh the the voice? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, so that's another aspect of Kathak that I just I want to explore more. Hmm. Um so I think the last thing we wanted to do is a jugal band. which uh no maybe you want to talk about that a little bit jugalband is basically the call and response or the trade offs and uh, here one person takes the takes the lead does an action or plays something and the dancer or the other person replies to it and this goes on for some time until they all come together and do like a grand sort of crescendo finale mm-hmm. usually that kind of caps Uh, at least that particular number of the performance it's a little back right. and forth element in it yeah it like it's great you know i mean this exists in in hindustani music it exists in carnatic music the same concept yes. um yes. i mean i you know what i'm i'm realizing as we're talking how co- how many common you know elements there are between all indian classical forms or yes. you know, um styles of dance or music um there's so many things that are just like fundamental to them uh yes so i yeah it's just very beautiful to see it kind of put out there especially through dance because it's something you can visually see so yes. for musicians it's especially like exciting because you're creating this thing and now it always it lives in our minds and our hearts and music kind of feels that way but with dance it becomes this whole another dimension um of expression for the same you know sound uh but now you can see it and i think it's it's really great this one to throw that in there sorry yes <laughs> so okay so we're going to do this on. yes all right i will follow
That was Thank great. Uh, so again, something you know you see a lot in Gaza. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also it's also very fun and playful. And many Gaza concerts will end with this kind of jiggle jiggle. Right, as kind of a climax. Totally. Yeah. I had one one last question actually that I was curious about. Um, a lot of times in Kathak, I hear a lot of instrumental music. Um, are there vocals in, as part of this and lyrical content that is um, part of Kathak performance? Oh, ab absolutely. So um, I think, as I was saying before, uh, I think most Kathak dancers would love to have a sarangi. Um, and if that's not available, they will use a sitar. So that's, you know, what I've done. And I've now been using the violin. Um, so I think the lyrical component is, is very, very important to have. And um, I also often use sing singing. So most, like the traditional instruments that we see in a Kathak performance is either sometimes sarangi and sitar, tabla, um, tanpura, and the singer. And the singer. And the singer yeah. is singing lyrics, like com com yeah. compositional. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we do lots of like tumris based on Radha and Krishna. Uh, we do lots of bandanas based on Ganesh. Uh, we have many stories based on Shiva. And then we show the, the, the major epics um, in the, you know, like Mahabharata, Ramayana, <clears throat> the Shavatar, all of that vocabulary we show. And, and, and so on the technical side, even the taranas, that can be very technical. Absolutely. There's yes. that also. Yeah. And I believe the taranas came uh, during the, the Mughal period. Yes. <clears throat> and we also have guzzles. Uh, yes. we, we also dance to guzzles, which also came during that time, mm -hmm. during the Mughal era. Mm -hmm. so the vocabulary is vast. Yeah. 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 It sounds like there's so many different... Um, styles of, of music that are being expressed through the dance and um, a lot of different influences. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's also this idea that um, there's a strong connection to, to Sufism. And I don't know if you've ever seen the whirling dervishes mm. uh, from Turkey where they're, they turn for hours and hours. So uh, I read a few times that there's a connection between those turns and, and cut. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's very fascinating. Yeah. You know, and even like in the music, um, North Indian music being kind of changed also by the same Mughal empire and uh, how it was influenced. Um, and then how gypsies went, you know, from, went to, yeah. from India and how, you know, along that whole route, just how right. art can change within yeah. different people and influence so many different places. Right, and um, flamenco, right? Yeah. Flamenco and, and Kathak, the connections there are pretty crazy. Right. We have have you some... With flamenco dancers? Many times. <laughs> like, yes. I think we all have. I, I'm sure Noren has done a lot with flamenco dancers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have some of the same exact rhythms. Wow. That's true. Yeah. Well, I, I want to see the next one. I look forward to that, whenever that is. Um, all right. Well, you know, thank you both so much. This was fascinating um, and a, a really wonderful look into the world of Kathak. And uh, really, we thank you both uh, very much for being here today. And I look forward to seeing you both in person at some point. Um, are either of you doing anything, any other online performances or anything? Um, if, if so, you know, let us know. And you can even tell us now if there's anything going on. Um, but... Um, yeah, again, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, leave your questions. If you have any questions uh, for Parul and Narain, you can leave them below in the chat and then we'll answer them uh, while, you're, um, while you're watching. So thanks very much uh, for both of you and I uh, hope everyone has a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.